welcome back to The Dad Chronicle. I'm your host, Alex Albisu. This is episode 73. Now, before we get started, I want to remind you that you can head over to thedadchronicle.com to subscribe to this podcast for free. Make sure that you're not missing a single episode. Also, we're going to do something a little fun after this episode. Stay tuned through the interview. I'm going to share some toddler tantrum stories that have been provided by some listeners and members of the Dad Chronicle community. On today's episode, I interview podcasting legend Brian Ibbett. Brian has been podcasting, God, since like the beginning. He's a big reason why I podcast in the first place, and we built a great relationship since I participated and competed in America's Next Top Podcaster. And not only is Brian an awesome podcaster, but he's also an awesome dad. We recount the day his son Tristan was born. No matter how prepared you think you are, it's going to hit you like a ton of bricks, and you're going to be a blubbering fool uh, sitting there with a baby in your arms, and it's totally true. We also talk about how you build a bond with your child and share your passions with each other. That part felt like it was so easy because all I had to do was be myself. We talk about how supportive his own father was when he didn't want to follow in his footsteps by going into the medical field. I never, ever felt any sort of pressure or any sort of uh, regret from him that I didn't follow in his footsteps. And finally, we talk about season two of America's Next Top Podcaster. So make sure that you listen up for news on how you can become part of that competition. Here's my conversation with podcaster, music aficionado, and father, Brian Ibbett. Brian Ibbett, thank you for being on the Dad Chronicles, sir. How are you? Oh, Alex, I'm, I'm good. Thanks for having me, man. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I, this is a long time coming. I've always wanted to have you on this show. And I am well, so you. glad that you accepted, and I'm and I'm really happy to have this conversation with you. So, uh, yeah. you know, why don't we take a second, because if people don't know who you are, which is doubtful, sure. but uh, let's take a moment to uh, let you introduce yourself to the audience. Sure. So I'm Brian Ibbett. I've been uh, doing podcasts since 2004, uh, one of the OG podcasters. Um, started out with a show called Coverville, which is still going strong. And I've had shows start up and, and either keep going or start up and fade. But currently the slate is uh, the morning stream five days a week, just about every weekday morning, except for Fridays when it's in the afternoon. Film Sack, which is a movie podcast once a week. Uh, Soundography, which is a music show I do with uh, Hammond Chamberlain, who you've had on the show before as well. Yep. Um, uh, I can't mention the Pokemon Go podcast anymore because I'm not doing that one anymore. Oh, uh, but you still play, <laughs> right? I still play, but it just was such a long time to produce that, to, to get stuff together for that show. And it was a night show because the other two hosts with full-time jobs couldn't record during the day. And uh, I'm fine with doing that every once in a while, but weekly... That cuts into, well, it cuts into family time, which is an appropriate thing to say for the show. That's right. Yeah. And you, and you have a family, which is a big reason why you're family. here. And you're also That's here right. uh, because you are a you are one of those people who are an inspiration for me to start podcasting. So, oh, stop. No, it's true, though. And, and, I, <laughs> and I truly mean that. And uh, if you're part of the Dad Chronicle community on Facebook, you likely saw I, I posted a picture of, of what cup I was drinking out of. And it was the 1500 episode uh, TMS mug. So oh, nice. um, it nice. was. It's it's truly an honor to have you on this show, and it's been awesome getting to know you through America's Next Top Podcaster, which is really where we kind of hit the ground running. And and I, I consider you a friend now. So so thanks yes. for thanks for being a friend. Is that how the song goes? <laughs> As do I, Alex. And yes, that is how the song goes. And now you owe uh, twelve cents in royalties to uh, the gold. Each of the Golden Girls. Yeah. Ah, all right, all right. Well, it's coming just in the three middle, of the ladies. Golden Girls. B. Arthur doesn't care. Yeah, that's true. She doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the state. <laughs> <laughs> why don't you uh, on the on the topic of family? Uh, let's introduce yeah. the world to your family. So sure. uh, you want to introduce uh, Tina first? Sure. So Tina is uh, my wife. Uh, <clears throat> we've been married since 1992. <laughs> Got married on D Day, 1992, June 6th. Could not be happier. It, it just you know I, I can't imagine a a happier relationship we are um and everybody probably says stuff like this but i mean we laugh at the same stuff nine times out of ten if she's thinking something i'm thinking it too Mm -hmm. you know we'll we'll be at a restaurant and um and she'll say did you see that and it'll be the exact thing that you know that i saw somebody do as soon as they walked into the door of the restaurant because we're you know the hive mind but 
Um, she's my best friend. She's uh, my wife, and I couldn't be happier with uh, with my decision to marry her. <laughs> And she is wonderful. I've had the pleasure She's of uh, meeting her both in Vegas and then when I went out to uh, yeah, when you to came out to visit Denver. Yeah. yeah, you guys met me for dinner, and that was super awesome. And uh, uh, yeah, big fan of Tina. I think she's awesome. She's great. Uh, so uh, in 1997, the two of us had a son, a boy named Tristan, and he's 22 now. He's uh, uh, currently working full time as the manager of a warehouse um, for a retail flooring company floor and decor i don't think they're outside of colorado so mentioning their name isn't like a you know like oh yes the good old floor and decor won't spark <laughs> anybody's like oh i know that place well <laughs> but um he's he's a great kid and he i uh, couldn't be prouder of who he's turned into even though obviously with every every parent there's going to be times it's like oh my god i don't know if you're going to live to see 16 or <laughs> things like that but uh uh, no, I couldn't be prouder with with the uh, the man that he's that he's turned into, and yep. he's currently back living with us for a little while. He was living on his own with a roommate. That situation went south more quickly than he would have had time to find a new roommate situation. Mm. And he's not making enough to be able to afford his own apartment. So it's basically he's in that stage that we all were at some point, where it's like, all right, gotta have a roommate. Yeah, and he's currently working on on getting back out of the house, which uh, I think is going to be. I don't know. I, I see it in the next couple months. He's saving up and and really trying to learn from the mistakes he made with the previous roommate. That's what it's about. And, and what's really cool is that you guys are being super patient and really working with him on that. And and you and I have talked about how how you guys are really kind of being proactive and, and working with him to to learn from those mistakes. And that's super, super cool. So I, I love the we support really, system that you guys have. Yeah, we really are because um I feel like I might have been pushed out of the nest. If you would have asked me at the time, I would have said I was pushed out of the nest too early. I'm kind of grateful for how I was nudged into college dorms when I was 17, living <laughs> living uh, on my own pretty much since I was 17. But um, as you know, as most kids who go to directly to college, they're going to be 17 or 18 that mm -hmm. first year of college anyway. But uh, my room was turned into a, a sewing room or, or storage or something uh, weeks after I moved out. So I really didn't have an opportunity to come back if something went wrong or uh, on holidays or things like that. If I want to come back on holidays, I'll sleep in, on a couch or something. Right. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. And so was that kind of a catalyst to changing maybe how you would respond to this situation with Tristan? Totally was. Yeah. I think it was, it was an appreciation for forced independence which i am that uh, that part of it i'm very grateful for because i don't feel like i ever was codependent or or really required anything from anybody else and i was an only child anyway growing up so i kind of grew up in that in that sort of solitude um solitude of youth where it's just you but your friends kind of mm -hmm. have this 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 ring around you uh, the outer, the inner ring kind of thing, uh, without a sibling. And so kind of being on my own, I just kind of relied on, on myself for that and, and didn't get too dependent on other people always being there. Like I could take care of myself if I needed to right. always happy to have other people around. Don't get me wrong, but it wasn't a situation where it's like, Oh my God, I need to have somebody around me all the time. Yes. And, and uh, sometimes people need that sort of push. And, and I think that you can get, you can certainly learn from that. And I think that it's, totally it's up to the parent to really figure that out. What, what works sure. best for their yeah. kid. Now, before we really talk a little bit more about Tristan, I want to touch on one thing uh, that you and Tina do that is so awesome. You guys, and you've talked about this a bit on, on the morning stream. You guys have a ritual. Is it like once a week where you guys do a mystery date night or is it once a month? What is it? Oh, once a month. Holy cow. I don't know if we'd be able to do it once a week. Yeah, I was about to say that. Uh, yeah, once, <laughs> once a month, we do what's called a mystery date uh -huh. and we alternate back and forth um, every other month. And what we do is we usually skip. I say usually. We've been doing this just for a little over a year, year and a half, maybe now. But we skip uh, December because there's already so much stuff going on with family and holidays and all that sort of thing. And what that allows us to do is, A, not have to worry about somebody having to plan something around all those events in December, but also alternates it. So instead of me always getting uh, February, then, you know, one year she gets it, the next year I get February, and, and we uh, it alternates that way since it's kind of an 11-month 
11 month schedule. Cool. And it doesn't have to be something super expensive or really elaborate. I took Tina out to brunch yesterday at a place that happened to do brunch and bingo. And uh, we had a blast. And, you know, the whole thing for the two of us was right around 50 bucks. Um, so good. Yeah, we've had expensive ones. We've taken each other to concerts and things like that, surprised each other with that. <clears throat> and and uh, I think there's um, there's just opportunities that come up that it's like, oh, she, there's no way she wouldn't love doing this. I know it's more expensive, but she's just absolutely going to love it. You so you spend a little it. bit more and yeah. it's totally worth it. it, it what has been the most uh, memorable thing that, that she's surprised you with? Uh, that she surprised me with. Let's see. the We did a scavenger hunt through the city of Denver. That was really cool. That's cool. Um, and it was like, it wasn't a speed run. So you could kind of take your time. You just go to certain points and you're looking for a, a particular gargoyle on a building. And then you get history about that building and about the gargoyle. And and even while you're walking through, it's saying, now over here on your, if you look to your right, as you turn on this street, you're going to notice this. And it's completely walking. So you start at one place, you do all this walking around, you stop, maybe have a drink somewhere or grab lunch or whatever. And um, you can put in your your time and, and compare it to other people who've done the same uh, scavenger hunt, but you don't have to. You can just say, no, I mean, we did it at our leisurely pace. We saw everything that we wanted to see and it was really cool. Yeah, that's awesome. What a great idea. So, okay, you know, if I think about all the people who listen to this show, we got a lot of parents and I'm sure they're in a rut where it's yeah. like, uh, we haven't had a date night in X number of months. How, oh, yeah. What would you like? What, what kind of kickstarted this for you guys? Do you have any suggestions for people like that to kind yeah. of get out of that rut? Well, number one, just do it and, and set down the rules ahead of time of like, um, you got to keep it a secret from the other player, but you do it or from the other player, from the <laughs> from your your significant other. But you do have to give them enough to know what to dress for right so don't uh make them wear shorts if it's like an outdoor concert in may <laughs> something like that <laughs> yeah. where it's going to be raining or hailing or something like that uh so um you know give them an idea but but you can keep it all the way secret and she's been great like she's done stuff where even to the point where we get to the place we're going um there was one month where we went up to boulder to the boulder campus and parked and started walking towards the planetarium so as soon as we got to the planetarium like okay we're going to be seeing something at the planetarium but i still have no idea what and it wasn't until we actually were in the seats seated and the lights went down that it turned out to be a laser a laser show featuring the music of queen it was like oh this is so perfect when was this just, when did this happen this was this was about three months ago three or four months ago because yeah, i remembered i i think this is the one oh no no was it was it Queen or you did something else with uh, was it Prince? I took her. I surprised her with a concert up in Red Rocks that was the Colorado Symphony Orchestra That's doing the music right. of Prince. I mean, either and, way, you guys got great taste. Like this is incredible. Your all's <laughs> ideas are incredible. Well, it, it was great for that one. Was the fact that uh, again we got almost all the way to our seats. Um, we got to the top of Red Rocks. This was all up at Red Rocks, by the way, which is an amazing venue to see a concert, and. It wasn't until we got to the very top and looking down at the stage that she saw that there was a a big screen in the middle that had the Prince logo on there. And she she knows enough about Prince to know that he's not not with us anymore. And we weren't seeing a Prince concert, but she knew this had to be like some sort of tribute to Prince. And it was that point that she figured out what was going on. But again, we got all the way to Red Rocks to almost to our seats before she realized what the concert was going to be. And that that's really the fun of it, the anticipation of them figuring out what the, uh, what the big surprise is. I love it. I'm going to, I was telling Deanna about this idea. We, we got to just do it. We, like you yeah. said, you just have to start. Like that's the big yeah, thing. You just have to start. And uh, Groupon is a good place to look because oh. if you're thinking like, all right, what's something that she'd like, just go to Groupon and look for events or surprises. Um, I almost I almost want to say something, but I think she might listen to this. She will listen to this episode, so I don't <laughs> want to give anything away. But uh, I got a couple really good ideas for future months from from Groupon. Uh, your local news stations will probably have a things to do in your city this month, and you can kind of scour that and say, "Oh, there's a wine and 
uh, something festival, like a whiskey and pizza festival or something. Let's go to that and, and surprise them with tickets to that. That'd be such a volatile combination. <laughs> whiskey man. and pizza. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Talk about heartburn. <laughs> that is uh, that is not a real thing as far as I know. That's something I just made up. But uh... <laughs> Somewhere somebody's listening to this and like, gold. That's gold. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm finding it, Jerry. It's, it's, it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's so cool, man. I, I love your all's relationship, and and I really, uh, it, it's so much fun spending time with with both of you guys, and and you guys truly have an amazing relationship. And oh, and, and out of that amazing nice. relationship comes this beautiful baby boy. That's you have right, you have dude. Tristan in your life, and let's let's take you know uh, twenty how many how many years now twenty uh, twenty two twenty two yeah. years ago we see a young Brian Ibbett. A naive I know. Brian Ibbett. A naive young Brian Ibbett with hair, uh, maybe still receding, <laughs> but not <laughs> not shaved bald like I am today. This is when I was still, I don't know if I was just kidding myself or if I just hadn't figured out that, you know, if I shave it, I'll, I'll look just fine if I shave my head. I'm in that mode right now, man. The The receding hairline is is bad and I, I don't know what to do. Should I just yeah. shave it? I should just shave it. It's a solution. I don't know if it's the only solution, but it's it's one that I went with. But there's, you know, hats and spray paint and all spray sorts paint. of other options, plugs and Rogaine and yeah, <laughs> there's yeah. many, many, many options if you're looking for something. I'll, I'll start other with the spray paint and uh, and report back. Um, there you but go. you, I think Rob Popeil might have that uh, <laughs> product. <for you. laughs> but uh, you know, you you had this baby boy. What was it like for you the the very moment you became a dad? What was going through your mind? Well, I'll talk about when I found out. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Tina surprised me. Uh, this would have been back two houses ago or two. No, I guess this was at uh, one house ago. Um, we were living in Westminster, Colorado, before we moved to Arvada. And she handed me a card in a little box. And I said, oh, wow, this is cool. What's this? And I opened the card. And um, it was fairly vague. But looking back, it probably was a little bit more, it probably had a little more information than I than I realized at the time but then in the box was a pacifier i do still have it somewhere of course uh not the the pacifier i think we used and was probably lost between the seats of a movie theater something like that <laughs> as those things always end up but uh but the card i have uh somewhere and uh I just remember it being so exciting and and um we hadn't even really been trying for a long time and we just lucked out so uh, fast forward to February, and uh, we knew the time was coming, but she was starting to have some uh, some contractions or or some some labor pains, and we decided, all right, well, let's call the doctor and see what's going on. I think we may have had um, Braxton Hicks contractions earlier right. that was were a false alarm or or, or something. But uh, we called the doctor, went in and saw him, and he said very casually. <clears throat> yeah, you might want to start making your way to the the hospital. And this was late morning, maybe early afternoon. And, and I think the way we phrased it was, okay, sh- could we stop and get lunch somewhere on the way? And he's like, no, I would just go directly there. <laughs> <laughs> and so we went, we went directly there. Can uh, I just point something out? That is yeah. like... That's such a Brian and Tina thing to do, just because I now know you guys. You guys are like the most relaxed people about things. <laughs> <I> know, right? <laughs> She's yeah. in the middle of labor, and you're like, right. can we stop to get lunch? Like, that is such I a know. thing that you guys and we do. we were both like thinking, all right, well, we probably got time. It, you know, it sounded like he was saying it very casually. It's like, oh, okay, well, do we need to race there? Or It's like, yeah, I, I would just head straight there, and get something to eat at the hospital. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's exactly uh, what we did. And it was a pretty, man, pretty by the book birth. Tina wanted, initially didn't want to do, oh, what do they call that? The needle in your spine, the uh, the oh, epidural. Man, epidural. She initially didn't want to do an epidural. Um, she decided pretty much right at the cutoff time, she's like, you know what? No, I do want it. Give it to me. And, and unfortunately, it kicked in a little bit later. Oh. So, so she still somewhat gave birth naturally and then the epidural kicked in and she's like okay well now i can't feel anything <laughs> but really it was a very a very by the book exactly you don't want any story that's that's a time you don't want any great stories to tell people right right it's like nope it went off without a hitch the doctor was great the the uh, nurses were great 
Uh, Tristan came out just fine, a little misshapen head from the forceps, as all the kids are frequently kids uh, will have. Mm. Uh, I apparently never grew out of it, but uh, <laughs> it just adds to the bald look. That's all. You're just fine. adds to the cool bald look. Yes, the the slightly misshapen head. Yeah. But uh, no, it was a very it was a very smooth by the book uh, delivery. That's yeah. th- that's the sort of story that you want to hear. Um, and you you answered the next question was Tristan okay? And it sounds like yes. So yep, totally. and what was it like holding him for the first time? Uh, it was a lot more emotional than I was expecting. And I'm a pretty, I'm a pretty open emotion guy. I kind of wear my heart on my sleeve. I don't cry at the drop of a hat, but I will like at the, you know, the first few minutes of up got me, of course. Oh, who didn't? If you, if you didn't, didn't react yeah, to you that, didn't. you're a monster. Exactly. You're a soulless, a soulless uh, golem is what you are. <laughs> if you didn't cry at the beginning of up, but, uh, uh, I wasn't expecting, you know, we'd been we'd been going through this for nine months. I knew it was coming. I knew I was going to have a son. I knew he was going to be here, and I knew I was going to be holding him. But for whatever reason, it was that first moment of me holding him and, and him, you know, squirming and squinting and wrapped up in a blue hospital blanket that it just was so overwhelming. And I, I, I did tear up. I teared mm. up, Alex. Yeah, I, you know, I did too. It's it, that's a proud moment as a dad, man. That's a that's it a really beautiful is. moment. Um, yeah, and it's but it's so unexpected because you think you think you you're so prepared, and and everybody always says that. Oh yeah, you think you're going to be prepared, but you won't be, and that's kind of 100 percent accurate. That, yeah. Yeah. No matter how prepared you think you are, it's going to hit you like a ton of bricks, and you're going to be a blubbering fool. Uh, sitting there with a baby in your arms, and it's totally true. Yeah, and he, uh, I'm sure he had a fun upbringing. Just knowing you and and Tina, and especially the things that you're into, you're such a music buff. You have one of the longest running music podcasts out there, and uh, you're also into a bunch of the same sort of geeky stuff I'm into, where exactly. you know, like Dungeons and Dragons, and uh, you know, video games and stuff like that. How did you impart all of that goodness? into Tristan uh, for, for him to maybe uh, pick up the same sort of appreciation for those things. That part felt like it was so easy because all I had to do was be myself and still like the things that I liked and listen to the things that I listened to and play with the toys that I played with or, or you know, uh, just basically do all the geeky things that I was doing already. And he saw, you know, that, that enjoyment just kind of... Um, he absorbed it, uh, very easily. Like he very quickly started liking video games at the age that we were, God, what, how old did we let him start? I guess it was, it started with things like when he was three or four, he was really into dinosaurs. And of course, you know, we wouldn't let him see Jurassic park, but we'd let him watch things like, uh, uh, dinosaur. What was that called? Walking with dinosaurs, really Mm. great series called walking with dinosaurs. I remember that. Yeah, like the three D dinosaurs and stuff. Yep, 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 exactly. And he'd get all into those those shows, and he'd like the toys and things like that. And we'd get him the Jurassic Park toys, even if he hadn't seen the movie. And then when he was ready to see the movie, we let him see the movie. Um, and there was a Dino something Dino Builder, and it was a Jurassic Park PC game or, or Mac game, and he got a real big kick out of that. He would be playing that. That was kind of his first first foray into. Uh, video games because keep in mind this was before smartphones or things like that so it wasn't you couldn't just hand him an ipad and have him play tap the shapes when they appeared on screen or things like that you had uh playstation well back then it would have been playstation one a couple years into it 1999 so Mm -hmm. when he was two the playstation one came out so i think i still had an nes oh cool that that uh he eventually glommed onto stuff like mario and and other light fun games but the the dinosaur thing was great actually there's a great story behind that so we watched almost all of the walking with dinosaurs episodes and in 2001 we went to australia to see tina's best friend who lives out there uh, jenny and her husband dean and pbs out there i guess the abc were showing walking with dinosaurs and it was an episode that tristan hadn't seen yet as a matter of fact it happened to be the final episode of walking with dinosaurs and so the four of us are in the kitchen cooking dinner together and uh, tristan's in front of the tv watching walking with dinosaurs and i guess he would have been uh four at this time 
he uh, the, the scene comes on where it shows a giant meteor entering Earth's atmosphere and crashing into the land and, <sighs> and sending up clouds and uh, an extinction level event of the, the smoke and, and the, the air not being breathable and all the dinosaurs falling over. And we hear him like, oh, the dinosaurs are all dead. <laughs> <laughs> like, in a, I mean, I guess it hadn't hit him that that was the reason you don't see dinosaurs around anymore is because they're all dead. But uh, for whatever reason, he wasn't expecting that in the episode of walking with dinosaurs, just to see them all, uh, all die like that. God, that's kind of funny. It I mean, is. It was like, we had to go console him in the middle of making dinner of like, yes, the, the dinosaurs all died. And there might've must have been some aspect of him that was thinking that, that at some point we were going to go to another country where dinosaurs were still walking around or something yeah i wonder but, about uh, that like like was and was that yeah. his first foray with like death Ooh, might have been yeah i guess so i guess it would have been because he didn't have pets that died earlier than that yeah because i wonder I how mean, that it like uh, you know Arya has dealt with death my my wife's grandfather passed away but uh, Arya was so little yeah that she doesn't she didn't even know really what happened she sure. doesn't really understand. And so, like, I, I'm kind of, uh, like, uh, I don't know. It's got to be tough, you know? No, yeah. that that And he would have had a similar thing with, with our situation, too. Tina's grandfather passed away while Tristan was really, really small. As a matter of fact, it was, well, I'm trying to remember if it was before or after he was born. I think it was before he was born, so maybe not. Mm. Maybe the two of them never never uh, met. But, um, uh, so, yeah, he really didn't have any experience with death until walking with dinosaurs <laughs> and discovering that yes that is true the dinosaurs aren't around because they all died and <laughs> it's a nice way to ease into death surprise yes exactly yeah and uh what sort of ways do you guys still get to play video games together or are you guys doing anything like that together these days we, we do um every year this actually is going to be the first year in she's the last five or six years that he and i aren't going to blizzcon together we both just decided that um Price-wise, with him looking for an apartment, it just wasn't going to be uh, a viable year for us to go to BlizzCon. So this will actually be the first of the first year in six or seven years that we haven't gone to BlizzCon together. But that would be just the the most fun guys trip because we would we'd get to California about um, two three days before BlizzCon started. We would have a day of maybe seeing uh, my family who lives out there in Simi Valley. Um, we would go to Disneyland, spend an entire day at Disneyland or Universal Studios. We did this last year. See Gary. To see Gary, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Gary from Landtronics. And then we'd go to BlizzCon together and we'd play World of Warcraft together. We do all the demos and, and all that sort of thing. We do play uh, some of that stuff together these days. Uh, Hearthstone, he and I would play. He's doing Pokemon Go. So we play that together and go do raids and and things like that. So we still do play video games together, which uh, which I'm glad about. It's you know, I'd, I'll be sad the day that we don't do that stuff anymore. And and hey, it might never come. I, you know, it might, might never come. And I'm assuring myself that that this no BlizzCon year is just going to be a blip, and that uh, once he's in an apartment and we're planning ahead for it without any big surprises, and there are always always going to be surprises. But yeah, you know, we we for the most part we should be able to make this a an anomalous year and, and be back to BlizzCon regularly. Yeah, that's, that's a special thing. I I'm looking forward to doing that with Aria. She's already starting to find an interest in video games. Like, like when I'm doing something on my phone, she's, she's very interested. Like I've been playing a lot of fallout shelter and oh, so yeah. she, and I'm like, touch the, the rectangle to like collect the thing. And she likes doing that. And then, <laughs> uh, I, I have, a like a super Nintendo emulator and she was playing with, uh, that goof troop game. You remember that oh, game? Oh, perfect. perfect. And, and so yeah. the whole time she's like, Goopy, it's Goopy. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> that's so great. Oh, it's so fun. So yeah, I'm looking forward to having similar memories with my daughter. It's it's a, when, when video games are kind of a special thing, like, like, you know, you grew up playing video games. I grew up playing video games. It's something that, you know, you want to impart on your kids because it's it a, is. such a fun activity and there's so much opportunity for collaboration and for, uh, you know, cooperation it's it's a cool thing it totally is and there's so much of that that you know you get that with sports and going out and throwing the baseball back and forth or football or or things like that so i feel like while obviously that's not going anywhere the the, the sports the real physical 
you know, going out and running together or cycling together, that's not going away anytime soon. This is just one more avenue that that parents can connect with their kids is over video games and and playing together and, and yeah. cooperating or playing against each other in a fun way and man, tabletop games, all that stuff. Just love doing that. What about music? Yeah. How do you guys bond over music? That's another big part okay. of your life. Let's get to the music uh, question here. Um, it was a similar situation. You know, it was basically just like video games. I would listen to the things that I normally listen to within reason. You know, I wouldn't, um, the heavy metal stuff would take a, a little bit of a backseat. Um, anything that was violent or suggestive, I would probably curb that as well. But um, what was fun is that we'd listen to the music that we liked, uh, both Tina and I, in the car while we were driving around. And then we'd notice that certain songs that came up a lot, he would start singing along with them. So he would start singing the words to Wonderwall by Oasis or uh, Venus is a Boy by Bjork was a really bizarre one because uh the the chorus is something like he believes in the beauty venus as a boy but tristan would hear it as eat the leaves and the beauty and he would <laughs> and so we'd listen to him singing those words of like uh you know eat the leaves and the beauty and we wouldn't heck no we wouldn't correct him because it was the greatest thing ever it's hearing adorable. him sing these alternative lyrics yeah it's adorable and um there was one point where he and i were working on a model for grade school where he was talking about the trip to Australia and had to bring a a model that he made of something that he saw in Australia. And we found uh, an online template for the Sydney Opera House that we could download, print on a piece of paper, cut out all the pieces, and make a paper Sydney Opera House, which was great. This was so much fun. And while we're working on it together, uh, he's listening to the Shrek soundtrack and he's singing along with a cover of David Bowie's uh, Changes that's on there. Ah. And I'm like, oh, my God, my son is singing a David Bowie song. I feel like I've succeeded as a parent. I can, I can pat myself on the back for a job well done because my son is singing. He doesn't know it's a David Bowie song. and He's not singing the David Bowie version, but he's singing along with a cover of it. That's good enough for me. There you go. And I came out of nowhere. Like, I'm sitting here listening to him singing those words and just blown away that he's singing along with a, with a David Bowie cover. So that's really how it starts is, is just, you know, I don't, I, we never believed in let's listen to Barney music or let's listen to specifically like kids bop or, or albums that were specifically for kids. Uh, we'd have songs that, that were kid friendly that were bands we like. Jonathan Richmond's got a great song called I'm a little dinosaur, which if you've been paying attention, you know, is a very appropriate mm -hmm. song to play. Uh, another one that he enjoyed. And you start making these playlists of Tristan music on your, your iPod at the time. And now the iPhone. And so when he's in the car, you just fire up one of those playlists, but, but it's going to be stuff that it's not going to be stuff that you have to kind of sit through. It's going to be like, all right, well, I like these bands anyway. I don't mind hearing these songs a few extra times. Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. And that's something my, my wife grew up a lot with that. She, uh, she, <laughs> she listened to like a lot of like Jimmy Buffett and like stuff like her parents will yeah. listen to Aerosmith and kiss like Aerosmith and kiss. They, they did a joint concert and, uh, they, and that was her first concert ever. Like that's a cool thing to. That's really cool. That's yeah. A great way to, Whereas great like thing to bond over. Mine was Britney Spears, which I'm not real <laughs> proud about. But uh, you know, it, it's. Uh, but on the other end of that, you know, Deanna recounts when she was little, <laughs> she was going through uh -huh. the the grocery store with her mom, you know, doing grocery shopping, and then she's just yelling, "Let's all get drunk and screw." Let's all right. <laughs> like she's just screaming stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. See, there's. <laughs> There's aside from the alcohol references and boy, why don't we get drunk and screws? Uh, not the very <laughs> most friendly song, but you got to look a lot of his other stuff, volcano and cheeseburger in paradise there. They could be remarketed as kids songs because oh, yeah. they're innocuous and, and easy to sing along with and, and, uh, um, relatively family friendly. And, uh, uh, so it's stuff like that, that it's like, all right, you know what? I like Jimmy Buffett. They like Jimmy Buffett. Let's listen to that in the car, and I'll just make sure to skip over track five. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> when that one comes up. <laughs> like, what? Are, so, does he listen to any music these days? Where you're like, I can't get into that. Yes. Or, yeah. <laughs> like like yes. what? Like what? 
uh, he listens to the the uh, the heavy metal stuff that's evolved into uh, the screaming. Like so, basically, it sounds like Cookie Monster is a member of the band. Oh, and so it's yeah. like. I know those aren't real lyrics, but but it is that stuff that, and I sing along with that when he wants to play it and kind of drives him nuts. But uh, like In Heart's Wake and uh, just trying to think of other bands that he that he listens to. Yeah, you're not big but into the I, screamo stuff, right? I'm not at all. I'm not at all into the screamo. The 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 genres I really can't get into are the. Um, the really aggressive hip hop and rap. Uh, and I'll go pretty, I'll go pretty far on the hip hop and rap. Like, you know, I don't mind Kanye and I don't mind uh, ice tea and stuff like that, but the really hardcore stuff I can't do uh, heavy metal with screaming in it with yeah. that specifically that kind of screaming. The screaming I like was all the hair metal stuff in the eighties, man. Poison was screaming, yep. you know, uh, uh, Van Halen were screaming. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all that stuff had screaming in it. And uh, and the new country I can't get into, but he and I'll still bond over the new Gorillas album or the new thing that, you know that, uh, um, oh, what's that song Sunflower that was part of the, uh, oh, uh, soundtrack to uh, Bob, yeah, it's a Post Malone, Post Malone, that's yeah. right, yeah, Post Malone, um, yeah, we'll totally both like that, and he'll he'll introduce me to music that he knows that I'd like that isn't that doesn't have the screaming in it and uh and say oh yeah here play can you hook up my my ipod or my iphone to the uh the car system and let me play some stuff and prior to this when he would do that it would always be the screaming stuff because mm. that was all he listened to but now he's kind of toned it back to where he's like all right well i know that i'll get through more than one song if i pick something that i like <laughs> that i think i'll also like <laughs> that's kind of funny so, so do you guys yeah. ever play any instruments or anything um very occasionally like i'm i'm teaching myself uh ukulele right now i've got four or five chords down i'm using a an app called musician um he currently isn't playing anything but he does want to learn guitar and i think at some point it'll be really fun to to you know combine our efforts and and uh and play together but um that feels like it's so far on the horizon that you know yeah. It that relies so much on on me and my time and him and his time yeah. and us being able to do that sort of thing. It's tough. Yeah, the it the music tough. thing is um, deeply ingrained in in my family, and we had is you it? know like literally just before we started recording, I was sitting down here with Aria. She picked up my ukulele and just started. You know, it's two years old, just kind of sure. plucking the things. And I sat down <laughs> with my acoustic guitar and. Yeah, you know, we just we started singing songs from Coco together and like other stuff. Oh, like it was that's just that's cool. That's yeah. really cool. I'm hoping that she picks up like she really gravitates towards instruments and dancing and stuff. So I'm hoping that kind of sticks. And if not, you know, we fine. But uh, she she seems to naturally gravitate towards this. So I'm hoping to start her young. I think that'd be really yeah. fun. Oh, for sure. Yeah, because boy, I mean, if you can get them on an instrument when they're when they're little and they can just become so proficient at it and and, yeah. and be awesome. Yeah. yeah. Now let's shift gears a little bit. I, I would like to learn sure. more about your dad. I don't know much about okay. your dad and, and how your dad perhaps inspired you um, to be an awesome parent yourself. Do you mind sharing that? Of course. Yeah. So my dad, uh, my biological dad, um, he and my mom divorced when I was really young. Basically, I don't ever remember a time that the two of them were, were together because I was so young when they got divorced, mm. like uh, a year old when they got divorced. So I kind of grew up in that weekends with dad, uh, weekdays with my mom situation. Um, but my, uh, my dad currently lives out in, in um, Vermont, near Burlington. Uh, he's retired. He is uh, a former medical physicist um, uh, and a, a very prominent one in the industry. Like if you search for his name, Jeffrey Ibbett, online, Boy, you thought you thought I came up with a lot of websites. Oh no, he's he's all over the place. Very prominent wow. um, physician, and uh, but now retired. And and I'm actually the first generation of that side of the family not to go into the medical professional uh, medical field, which I never ever felt any sort of pressure or any sort of uh, regret from him that I didn't follow in his footsteps. That is 
great. Too, too often you yes. hear that like these these family professions like going down the line, everybody's like, you got to do, you got to be the lawyer. You got to, exactly, like, that is yeah. so great, Brian. That's so great. No, it, it is. It really is because uh, th- that is, that would be my greatest fear is like to disappoint him by, by not going into the field that he wanted me to go into. But he was always, you know, very supportive of uh, my art career, uh, podcasting. He's a subscriber to my podcast. He's actually even a Patreon <laughs> subscriber to my podcast. So I still figured out a way to get money from him on a regular basis. <laughs> That's um, great. But, and he'll, and he'll even, you know, email me and say, Oh, I love that cover of so-and-so you played," or he'll text me or, or something and let me know something that I just played that he really liked. Um, and do you yeah, mind, even uh, still? Oh, uh, yeah, real ahead. quick, j- just on just on the topic of you know you starting to, po- to po- the podcast and stuff. Yeah, I mean, was there ever any sort of nervousness when you when you kind of approached him about, hey, you know, I don't want to go into this field. Did you ever hesitate about that when no, you had that conversation? No, not at all, because for a while when I was a kid, I wanted to do the wanted to be a veterinarian. I think one out of every three kids probably wants to be a veterinarian when they're a kid. Um, and, but it wasn't, it wasn't too long after that. I mean, it was junior high that I switched to the art side of things. I realized that I was pretty good at art and enjoyed it a lot. And he was super supportive. As a matter of fact, his mother was an artist. She was also in the medical field, but, but she also was an artist and he, um, he supported me from that perspective of like all right well you know my mom is an artist he wants to be an artist that's totally cool and um helped me get through uh colorado institute of art or the art institute of colorado i guess was what they changed their name Mm. to 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 make it like the other uh the other art institutes around the country and was always always supportive about it and uh went into a, a graphic design you know, a couple graphic design jobs right out of college, started doing the podcasting thing as a hobby. And even back then when I just started that and I sent him a couple episodes, uh, he subscribed from the get go and was really supportive about it. It's always so awesome. Like my parents are super supportive of this stuff too. And it's so, it's like, it's just reaffirming, you know, like that you're kind of, you're making uh, your old man proud, you know, like that's, that's, there is a sense. And it's also good that you know they're also just not just proud of you but supportive monetarily yes like that's yes. super cool um and, and you know you you now do this for a living you're, you're doing creative projects for a living between the podcasting between some freelance stuff so correct um yep. how, how how is that lifestyle for you do you do you love it do you find it nerve-wracking like how is it uh as somebody who uh, you know i really admire the work that you guys do, what happens behind the scenes uh, mentally for you? <laughs> there is a little bit of stress. I'm not going to lie that, you know, there's stress of, of making sure you have enough hours of freelance to, to make ends meet. And when, you know, you, you basically just kind of have to look, you really have to look ahead and say, all right, how many hours do I need to make sure a freelance do I get every month? to be able to balance everything out and make sure that if, if I don't get 10 more patrons or even if I lose patrons or supporters or subscribers, paid subscribers that we're still okay, we get to keep the lights on and, and, uh, and keep food on the table. And once you figure out that amount, that, that X amount, you can kind of start planning for it. And as long as your clients are good, unfortunately I've got one client here who's been dragging his feet for a couple months. And because of that, I just, I had a plan B. I said, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to do a lift thing and have that in my back pocket for whenever I need it. Because the cool thing about that rideshare industry, the gig uh, industry is that a, it's not going away anytime soon. And B it's almost an immediate solution. You don't have to worry about, applying for jobs and hoping you get your your job or getting a resume together and then applying for jobs, things like that. You just go right in and get that taken care of. And then you've got it as an option. Yeah. And if I don't, if I don't lift for a whole week, I'm not going to get fired. If I don't lift for a month, I'm not going to get fired. I can just say when I need it, it's there, I can do it. And, and I can make sure that if, if a client is really slow on paying me, I can supplement it with this. And then I got a little bit extra the next month when, when they do finally pay. But, um, no, that's cool. That's, I I love you. You're just such a, 
it's such a the the spirit of an entrepreneur, man. Like that's so that's so <laughs> great. You, you do whatever it takes. Like that's that's so cool. And so, I gotta say, you know, all the other stuff I do, I do in the in in a secluded basement in the house. Yeah. So yeah. Lyft is actually kind of a little bit of a uh, a break. It's actually like getting to see some daylight and being outside. And I don't mind the driving around, uh, driving people around. I figured out what it is that I like about it. And I didn't, I haven't talked about this even on uh, TMS. But oh, exclusives, everybody. Exclusive, an exclusive right here. Uh, with with uh, Rideshare, I can, I'm given a, a task. I don't have the opportunity or the ability to multitask while I'm doing that task. Like I can't, I can't be going through and picking songs for Coverville while I'm driving. I can listen to a playlist, but chances are it's going to be several different versions of the same song. <laughs> That's going to drive somebody nuts. Yeah. Um, so it's basically, I'm only able to do one task at a time. I have everything in my means to complete it in the amount of time I'm given. And then I'm given a new task. And there's something that is very satisfying and very zen about doing that compared to freelance where I've got, oh, right now I've got five projects that I've got to work on and everybody wants it tomorrow. Whose do I put first? And can I work on one while I work on, while I'm listening to music for tomorrow's show or do I need to be focused or things like that? And there's so much stress with the freelance and podcasting in that mindset that being able to just say, yeah, while I'm doing Lyft, that's all I can do. And, and I go in with an empty to-do list and I leave with an empty to-do list. That's great. <laughs> that, but yeah, but I think you need that, right? Like it's, it breaks that, yeah. up the, the monotony of uh, the, the craziness of your days. I can, I can imagine yeah. how, totally. how crazy your days get. Um, so, totally. so I totally understand that. Um, now I like to end the show on sort of a words of wisdom note. So Ooh, for, for yeah. you, as somebody who's really imparted a lot of a lot of great lessons learned and, and some really fun stories, like you're just an awesome dad. And you know, what would you say to somebody listening to this show, perhaps somebody who was in your shoes twenty something years ago? Sure. Um number one, be yourself with your kids. Um don't you're going to be the parent and that's that's a given. You have to be the parent. You can't you can't stay in that I'm going to be your best friend mode forever. It's not sustainable. So be yourself, but be a parent. Um, and your kids will follow in your model and um, they may not, they may not like all the things you like and that's totally okay, but uh, they will appreciate the fact that you're genuine and honest and, and that you're true to who you are with them and, um, and take advantage of those things where the Venn diagram overlaps. Like if you both like video games, play video games together and don't just play video games together, figure out, you know, if there's a con or if there's something that you can do that provides you with a, a, a real fun time to bond and to do something together, then take advantage of that. Um, and, uh, and be, I mean, that's, that's it. Be true to yourself for your kids so that they're true to themselves as true, true to themselves as they grow up. That's beautiful, man. I love that. I love that Thanks. phrase. Um, and before we end the show, God, we, we got to talk about America's Next Top Podcaster. I know. I know. We barely brought it up. Yeah. Let's so, talk about uh, it. So we're getting ready for season two, right? And that's people. How I, that's how I got to meet you, Alex. Yeah. Like, and look at us. We're friends because of America's Top Podcaster bringing people together. Um, it is. Yeah, and so, it's such a. It's su and, and everybody who listens to the show has has heard me just rave about the experience, and uh, you've likely also heard all the the uh, post season one interviews that I've been doing. Uh, I mentioned it on oh, this show quite a bit. So it's been fantastic. Yeah, like give give us your sales pitch. Why should people sign up and listen to this show? Sure. Well, if you've ever even thought about podcasting, or you've tried it, you've tried your hand at it. Maybe you had a show that that did okay, or or scratched the podcasting itch, but you want to do more. This is absolutely the way to get started, and it's a way to learn from people who think they're professionals, <laughs> who, who people regard as as professionals. Um, we've got uh, three longtime podcasters as judges. We've got another podcaster who's a host, so Scott, or uh, not host, uh, coach. So Scott Johnson, uh, Nicole Spagnolo, and Justin Robert Young were coaches for the first season. Nicole, oddly enough, is um, has got some more parenting things that are going on these days. Yeah, so how about she's that? Season <laughs> two. 
I know. Appropriate. Yeah. Uh, so Jenny Josephson, who was a coach in season one, is going to be picking up the mantle. Oh, and I beautiful. can't think of anybody better to fill Nicole's shoes as kind of that nurturing, supportive, but lay it on the line and be frank and, and honest if something isn't quite up to snuff and, and tell you how to make it better. Jenny is the quintessential pro uh, at this. She's she's an equal to Nicole in that, in that role. It's going to be great. Um, Tom Merritt is the coach. You get a chance to talk with Tom Merritt every week and get coaching from him on how to make your podcast better, not just the one you're working on for top podcaster, but also using those things to improve your own podcast and, and the things you work on behind the scenes. And, uh, and then you get to talk to me and Hammond every week and, and we kind of mold it all into a show. He's producer extraordinaire, making things sound so good. And I get to, uh, fulfill a lifelong dream of being a reality show host, <laughs> <laughs> but it is for all the work that's involved. It is a lot of fun. And, uh, and I think, uh, people, uh, would absolutely get a kick out of it. So you just go to America's Next Top Podcaster. All the details are there. The whole first season is there. You can listen to those as well as, like you said, the diary episodes that you've been putting together. Um, I hope, I haven't. I think we've talked a little bit about this, but I hope you'll continue to do those for season two if you've got the time. Oh, but, of course. Uh, yeah. Good, 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 good. Um, because I think it provides such a great insight of the after the, the show aspect. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like it's so cool, just getting that. Like, uh, you know, you go into that that thing, and I know this from personal experience. You're all chipper. You're like, yeah, yeah, let's do this. And then about halfway through, you're just like, man, I gotta get out of here, man. <laughs> no, not really. But you, you know, it's 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 a completely yes. different experience. It's such a fulfilling um, experience, especially if you're really interested in learning the art of podcasting and understanding kind of what goes on behind the scenes with yeah. uh, even listening to this show, like the amount of the amount that this show has grown. And I've had, uh, listeners chime in like, dude, since you've been on that show, like uh, the dad Chronicles really evolved. And I'm like, Oh, thanks. You know, like you could feel, uh, just great collaboration, great opportunities to learn, highly recommend you, uh, people at home, Go check it out and make sure that if you're interested in podcasting, sign up for season two. It is one yeah, of the best experiences sure. you'll have. It's absolutely true. Totally true. Yeah, we've got we've got a lot of great things in store for season two that I can't wait to uh, can't wait to do. And if you're worried about how much work is involved or or you know things that are uh, scary about it, don't worry. It's a lot of fun. We make it as as uh, painless as possible. But you know you're going to do some work. You're going to work hard at it, and you're going to be rewarded at the end. It is. It's very rewarding. So um, again, America's Next Top Podcaster dot com. Um, and our guest today has been Brian Ibbett. Now, Brian, uh, where else can people reach you? What should they know about all the things going on uh, in your world? Probably the easiest place to start is Coverville, uh, either Coverville dot com or Twitter dot com slash Coverville or Facebook dot com slash Coverville. Um, I'm pretty easy to find online if you just search for the word Coverville. And it's spelled just like it sounds, like the the name of a city, C-O-V-E-R-V-I-L-L-E. -E. Um, you can hear me every day on the morning stream or every weekday on the morning stream, which is at frogpants.com slash TMS. And um, that is, again, it's still the most, I've been doing it for for geez, seven years now, eight years. Holy cow. Oh, and it's oh, still one God. of the most fun things that I do. Yeah. Um, I say that, but it's like, no, soundography is one of the most fun things that I do. America's Next Top Podcaster is one of the most thing, fun things I do. Yeah. Basically, if it's not fun, I don't do it anymore. I figure out a way to get out of it. <laughs> Good for you. I think I need to learn how to do that. You need to teach me your ways. So yeah, No problem. Yeah. You just slowly start pulling back until they fire you. <laughs> 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 is what you do. I'll keep that in mind. Um, yep. Yeah, and uh, go, go check out TMS uh, Scott Johnson, who was on the show uh, as well. Uh, that's your co-host over there. So he is. It's a, it's a lot of fun. Things are true. All right. Uh, again, our guest has been Brian Abbott. Thank you so much for being on the Dad Chronicle. Thank you, Alex. Thanks for having me. Thanks again to our guest Brian Abbott. It was super awesome to have that conversation with him. Just like Scott, it felt like a long time coming. Um, since Brian is really another huge part of why I podcast. So it's been super awesome getting to know him. And I got to know him as we talked about on America's Next Top Podcaster. So if you want to check out more about that show, head over to America's Next Top Podcaster.com.
Now, as promised, I wanted to share some toddler tantrum stories. This is something that I put out on the Dad Chronicle community. And uh, if you want to join the community, all you have to do is go to facebook.com slash the Dad Chronicle and click the community button on the left. And uh, you can request to join this group if you're not already there. So in the group, I said, looking for ridiculous totter, totter, toddler tantrum stories for the Dad Chronicle and uh, said that I would share them on this show. So here we are. And I wanted to share some highlights of, of some ones that I thought were really funny. So first is going to come from Andy. Now you guys might actually remember Andy because he was on the show. So he said, my son was having a tantrum because he wanted mommy while being held by mommy. I feel like that, <laughs> I feel like that has happened quite a bit to a lot of you. Uh, he also had another one, got a new one from last night. I had to yell at my son to stop licking the public bench because there was water on it from the rain that had just fallen. That is gross. Also, here's one from Kelly. This one's a, a little bit of a read. So uh, this it's really funny though. All right. One time when Lucas was two and a half, I put him in, uh, I put him in timeout in his room. I began to hear thumping noises, then a crash. Ran into his room to see what happened. Every single piece of furniture had been turned over and he broke in a window in his room by throwing books at it until he found one big enough to break it. There was a big pile of books under it. He, he never made a sound, just quietly destroyed his entire room. I took, all, <laughs> I took out all of the furniture, cleaned up the window, and left him in a mattress, uh, <laughs> left him a mattress on the floor felt like a complete failure. Awesome. He's now a wonderful boy who turns 14 this Saturday. Uh, but that day, I thought he might be some kind of Satan spawn. Good times. Good times indeed, Kelly. Uh, there are more on this thread that I will share uh, in more recordings. If you'd like to share your um, toddler tantrum story or just any feedback on the show in general, you can reach me at the Dad Chronicle Podcast at gmail.com. And if you'd like to listen to other stories of fatherhood, you can head over to thedadchronicle.com. And if you enjoyed this show today, give us a five-star rating on iTunes and consider supporting this show. And if you head over to thedadchronicle.com, there's a link to become a patron, and we have a lot of really awesome patron rewards. So be sure to check that out. Thanks again for listening, and I'll see you next time. If you like this show, check out more great content at incastmedianetwork.com.